Hello everybody and welcome in the second part of this tutorial in which we are sculpting the human anatomy using Blender. Uh, today what we are going to do is we are going to define a bit more some muscles and we, all, we are also going to dive more into details. So I hope you are ready, I hope that you en enjoyed the previous part and uh, let's get started. So what we are going to do uh, here is we are going to define some muscles a bit better, especially the, the forearm muscles and uh, we are going to add more volumes to the torso and some uh, other part of the of the of the body uh, so i'm going to enter into sculpt mode like this and i'm going to uh, start defining a bit more uh, let's start with the uh, the head and especially the eyes so i think that from an order uh, from an orthographic view, the eyes are still a bit uh, big, so I'm going to scale them down and I'm going to enter into sculpt mode and I'm going to enter into sculpt mode with the mesh and using Alt W, so the grab brush, I'm going to to shape the skull a bit better making it more thin here in the front view for the jaw and making the jaw a bit more straight and the skull was a bit too big so I took the time to, to make it a bit uh, to, to, to make it less wide from the from the side view I think that I can push the, the jaw, the, the, the chin part a bit back and I can also lift a bit the, um, the jaw section because I, I need to see the plane of the under side of the, um, of the jaw which was not uh, that much uh, present. So let me go, let me use clay strip to add it. Uh, so I can dig using the, the control key a bit here in order to push that plane back and I can add back some some uh, clay to define the jaw a bit better. It's really important to, to have this section well defined for the head. It's representing the, the plane of the under side of the jaw so you can see that from this view, it's more like it's it's more shaped like a, a triangle, and I can add even more volume there to connect the the jaw with the yes to connect the jaw with the the chin a bit um, better. So you can see it's creating a, a sort of triangle shape here. So from there, what I can do is maybe I can I, I think I will scale a bit the the cranium because it's for me it's too too large too wide so i can push the neck a bit and i can introduce a curve in the neck and uh, maybe i will have to push back the whole head um, back a bit so for that i'm going to mask out the um, the whole the, um, the whole head using a right click I can select I can mask oh it's not working so apparently it's not working so let me unmask with alt M we go back in object mode and re-enter sculpt mode I think oh it's box mask sorry I'm going to use the lasso mask and I will mask the I think I will mask also the neck like this and maybe so with control you can remove from your mask so I'm going to remove a bit or maybe not that much let me let me add back some 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 part like this and I'm going to press A and I'm going to smooth my mask and it will create a smooth a smoother transition here and now what I can do is pressing A I can invert the mask and I can use the move tool so the move tool is uh, located down here 
for the for its pivot point. So what we're going to do is we're going to enter into the masks into the um, the, the sculpt section and set the pivot to the uh, pivot um, to the mask border, and we can now push back the head a bit. I think like this. It's going to be. Hmm. I think it's going to be fine like this. The head is probably a bit too small, but maybe I can push it a little bit back like this. Yes, I, I think this way is, is it's okay. And now what I can do is I can push my eyes on the x axis, uh, on the y axis. No, on the z axis. So it's local z. I can push them back. And now I will have to in the sculpt mode to clear my mask, pressing A, and I will grab my um, my move brush again and maybe tweak the neck a bit. So I don't like the, the way the cranium is shaped for now. So I will, I will clearly define some shapes. So usually the, the cranium is going back up. So I can create a smoother S shape here from the side view, like you can see. And I'm going to add back the, the sternocleidomastoid muscles like, like, there, like this. And uh, using the clay strip, I'm going to dig here a bit. And this is going to help me define the, the, the way the trapezius muscles are connecting to the front part of the body, like this. And um, I think this will, um, this will help me a lot uh, with, what I, with what I'm doing. So I'm going to smooth out this part and maybe I've I've been not that much precise. In fact, it's going it's 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 usually connecting to the to the, the the end of the clavicle, so right about here. So I'm going to add some shape here and reemphasize the the clavicle as a bike handle, as you can see it. Okay, so the sternocleidomastoid muscle is there. I can re-add it. And I'm going to smooth everything out. Like this. And you know what? I think that now it's, a, it's probably a good time to go back one sub-div level down. So that's what I'm going to do in the scope mode. It will be easier to, I think it will be easier, way easier to, to, um, to push forms around. And um, yes, so I'm going to, or to push the Adam apple a bit forward. And I'm going to push the clavicle a bit more. And you know what? The clavicle muscle uh, bone is not you know, is not well enough defined, I think. So I'm going to add to it. And I'm going to shape it so it's thinner at the end. So like this. And I'm going to add back what we call the acromion process. Again, it's like a, a small uh, part on top of it, on top of the clavicle, that um, uh, on top of the sorry, on top of the shoulder, that protects the um, the basically the sc the, sc the scapula attachment point, insertion point, and uh, yes. Something like this is going to be okay, I think. I'm going to smooth a bit where the sternal, uh, the super stern, super sternal notch is, which is the, the 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 top of the sternum here. 
supra means on top of, sternal, sternum, and notch, it's a notch, <laughs> basically. And uh, the sternocleido can be a bit deep, deeper than what I've done. And uh, in fact, it's it's it should it should be two muscles, one that goes there and one that that goes in that direction. But uh, here it's going to be fine. I'm going to, to cut a bit more using a crease, and maybe I can cut here too to emphasize the fact that we have two muscles there. I can add a bit back because this one is way flatter than the than the thin one that just connects. Um, really close to, to this point of the clavicle. Okay, so maybe I can smooth a bit the things there, here and there. And may maybe, you know what, I think that my eyes are still too big. So I'm going to... I'm going to, 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 to shape them, them so they're a bit smaller. Mm. Back in object mode, I can select them and push them a bit inside and scale them again. Go back into sculpt mode and using the move brush, the grab brush, sorry. I can make sure that they are shaped the way I want. So from the bottom view, they should be rounder. And I should really uh, define the, the way the, the top lead is. is uh, sculpted. So from the three quarter view, I can also push back this view. So you can see that it flies back to to the ear a bit more. Can maybe flatten also a bit the bowl of the nose there. And maybe I can start using crease to add some indication of the of the arcade here. And um, here I'm missing, I think, a really important part. So I'm going to add back the crease of the eyelid, but on top of it, using my clay strip, I miss another part that breaks the, the top section of the arcade and that creates a plane that is really important that we don't have. So I'm going to to push here some. I'm going to 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 destruct destructurize. Can can I say that to to destroy? Sorry, to destroy. I'm going to destroy a bit the orbital section to push the <laughs> to push the things back. As you can see, it's very it starts to to get weird. But I'm going to, this is going to give me some, some really good opportunity to, to add back some realis or like, uh, some, uh, some clay back to, to, to add more volume to, to my shape. Okay. So using clay strip, I can feel here. And while filling this, I'm gonna try to use another stylus that this may be, yes. And I can push that here a bit more straight. And this is going to join here inside of the, inside of the, in the, inside of the eye. So I'm gonna have to work a lot on this because it's 
it's not that easy i will have to push back the corner of the the inside of the eye a bit more and i will have to merge those two parts from the side so but at this point this one is going in that direction and this one is going inside which is pretty hard to you see here but don't worry it's going to work fine so here I'm pushing here inside using uh, the, the crease brush here I can push also in order to define the eye Okay, it starts to take shape. It will take a long time, I think, or it will not be that easy to to manage, but bear with me, we are going to do that. So it's just a question again of time and patience. Here I can create, define a break for the lacrimal uh, section. And as you as you will see it creates a it's a it's a three stack layer I would say. Um, from the side you can clearly see you should clearly see this part uh, breaking the silhouette. So I'm going to, to 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 dig here in order to to make that that part clear and separate it from the top of the of the eye. Like this. And I'm going to crease again here. And I'm going to crease again here to, to define this plane. Like this. So I know it's not perfect, I know it takes time, so again, bear with me. We're going to make it work. So again, I think I think my eye is still big enough, big, big, as you can see here. I should be able to, if I measure with, a, for instance, a, a tool, I should be able to to have one eye in the middle, in terms of, uh, in terms of scale. And that's not the case. I think it's. This is a bit better. And I'm going to make it higher. And now we are going into a better direction, I think. So maybe I've pushed too far the, the, the lacrimal section. And maybe it will go up one level, if I can. Yes, because now we will define using scrape Remember, it's the, the shortcut that I've put is Alt F. I will define those planes a bit better. So this is going inside there. And we should, here we should see the arc going to through there. And so I'm going to use the, the, the clay strip again. I'm going to save a new, a new version of my, of my file. So just just a second. It's on my second monitor. Yes. Remember to save a lot. <laughs> you don't want to break your, corrupt your file, at this stage. And yes, I'm adding a lot of weight to this this section just to. 
to place the shape the way I want and I'm going to uh, and later I'm going to push it back. One thing that you can do too that will be helpful is to mask the section that you don't want to touch. So in my case it's this one. I'm going to push back the strings to the maximum. Uh, I don't want this, so I'm going to er erase it. So this whole part is the eye, and I don't want it to move. So now I can easily make it pop out and from a side uh, view this is going to go around and this is going to go in front so something like this yes and now using the trim brush so alt f i, I can uh, i can flat it i can smooth it here i can sh shape it more squarish underneath too something like this smooth it back let's just make it look right takes time Okay, I can maybe clear my mask and see where I've been, where I've gone. I can smooth here. I can add back some crease there. And here I can again push back my 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 eye. You can see that I've totally destroyed my top lip, top lid here. I'm going to make it um, to make it visible again. I just don't have the topology underneath to to account for what I for the change that I've I've, I've taken. Increase even more and smooth even more again. I'm using crease, but using the inverse of crease, pressing control, you can also sharpen your sharpen the sections of your volumes which is pretty useful. And so now it's just a question of making the whole thing looks not uh, looking not that much wobbly, you know, because now it looks very, <laughs> very wobbly. So using trim, the scrape brush, I can push back the planes of the of the lead. So this one. Here too, in the bottom part. Here too. And I can adjust the uh, wobbliness. <laughs> I 
I'm going to push it back because it's too far away from the eye in the cornea. And same thing from for the top section. I want to. Uh, I'm looking for a very o homogeneous, uh, like thickness, very consistent thickness all around my lid. So you can see that I'm starting to get rid of the different uh, wobbliness uh, effect, effects and I'm going to cut here and using control I can also push the, the crease of the eye there okay it starts to look much more realistic like this. So now using the clay strip brush, I will emphasize the volume of this part, if I can. We'll do the same for the lower lead. Trying to blend a bit the shapes so it's not too harsh. And using the the move brush, the grab brush, I'm going to push the arcade a bit from the top, and I'm going to push inside the the layering part, the top layering part that we've just created. Again, it's just, it, really, it's just a question of time and like spending the time on it. Can quickly get horrible, but you have to, to spend the time. So now we will mask the second layer, the fold here, this one. And I will also mask the lower lead just so I be I will be able to push the the top lid so we can see it from the, the side and I'm going to clear the mask and then I'm going to readjust what I've been missing. Creating the crease here again. Reshaping with the move brush. Maybe I just realized that here it's too, 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 too low. So I'm going to mask out again. Maybe this section right now, for now. And you know what, I'm going to add one level of smooth. Whoa, didn't work. Yes, one level of smooth. And I'm going to push that a bit higher. Especially on the side there. And make it a bit going back like this and I'm going to clear the mask and now it starts to look I think a bit better and we are losing the shape of the eye so that's the <laughs> the last thing that I want of course so um, so how to accommodate for that we we can just push here the remember that it should be flat on the top flat on the inside like this it starts to to look better I think 
and I'm going to crease again here again to separate the top lead so that's really important for me here just defining the shapes the, deep, the three parts of the of the eye is really important and I'm going to create to use the scrape brush again to define the planes better you can see it starts to take shape now it's 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 again sculpting is a very iterative process and you you have to put the the time and effort to to, to reach for the quality that you want I'm not saying that it's the best eye that I've sculpted but it's it's something that could work I think Okay, so I'm pretty sure that uh, soon we will go back to uh, to the to this part. So I'm just going to flat on the top right now, and I'm going to to go to visit another another section of the of the the sculpt, and we are going to probably go back to the head or this part a bit later in the in the tutorial. Okay, so we spent a, a good amount of time on the on the eyes for now for me so remember it's also good for sometimes to to take some break to the to the things that you're sculpting the ear is a bit too small so from uh, now I'm going to, to shape it like this and then should make it bigger and yes it's working way better I think and I think that the eyes are a bit high on the on the on my mesh, so I'm going to adjust them, and which means that I need to go back to this eye and push it back and to readjust for it. like this and again it's maybe a bit flat remember that you don't want the eye to be flat because it's following a sphere shape so I've <laughs> I just told you that I don't want to spend time on the eye and I am going back to the eye so you know what it's a good time to okay stop right now going back to work on it later. Okay. Okay, so I think that from this view I can push out the cheek a bit and I can use the clay strip brush to add back some, some cheeks to our character. And I can push back the, again the zygomatic bone here and I can a bit uh, dig a bit underneath I guess and one thing that's missing a bit also is some volumes there to connect uh, the nose to the cheek like this not too much so I'm, I'm being careful with this and here I can also dig a bit, not that much again, but enough to make it work. I can here dig a bit also underneath the eye to, to again to push the, the eye inside to follow the, the, stru the structure of the skull. Okay. So, um, 
I think that we can push also a bit the ear inside like this. Not that much, but I think now it starts to, to look a bit better at least uh, from uh, at a quick glance. So what we can do is maybe we can work maybe on the on the nose a bit better, a bit more. So I'm going to going to, to dig a bit more with the draw shape here. You can see that it digs pretty uh, pretty hard inside the surface, and if you're using control, it's adding geometry pretty fast. But we don't have that much. Uh, geometry to, to do the shapes that I want so I'm just going to use this the, in fact I'm going to use the, the move brush to accommodate for that and I'm also going to re-emphasize a bit the, the arc the arch of the of the nose here and using crease I'm going to add a, a crease right there where, where the keystone is again the keystone is like a trapezius, a, a trapezoid shape, and uh, here we have a, a plane that is more, more, more so like this, a bit rounder than we we, we can think. And I'm going to add um, hard angles on the on this part of the nose, and maybe the nose is a bit too long, so I'm going to push it back up a bit. And the nostrils can be a bit uh, smaller too. For the mouth, I can make it shorter in size, in length. And uh, I can ag again validate the fact that it's uh, wrapping around a, a cylinder shape. That's really, really important to notice. You don't want your mouth to, to be flat. Um, so bear that in mind and um, make sure that you have um, the volume that goes around the, the volume that goes around the mouse that is pretty well established. Um, you can push a bit the, the corners of the mouse and then using the scrape brush you can uh, blend it with the rest of the mouth of the of the the side of the, the, the head sorry. but don't push it too far otherwise you will have somebody that looks pretty strange or or in many cases it will age the character also and looking from the top view you don't want to have something too flat so it's very important to push the cheek forward a bit. And also you want this part to be visible from the side, the three quarters. So I'm pushing back this section so we can see it from the three quarter view. You want this shape to be well established. Maybe I can push the corners back a bit of the mouth. So, okay. So I, I think for now, at least for now, it's enough for the, for the head. And uh, we can spend more time on the rest of the body. It will be easier for the rest of the body because we have the vast majority of the things uh, placed correctly. I think the, the only thing that we can, uh, that we can quickly correct uh, because it was quite uh, wrong, I think, is this, this bone. That is not defined enough, I think. Uh, that breaks the silhouette from the side view, so I can push it back. And this is connected to the um, the fascia lata, which is a, a la the large muscle that um, that that uh, wraps the the quadriceps from the side view. And here we have the the oh. The, the the I don't remember the name. It's, I, I I've used it in the previous uh, video. The um, a big strap that goes down the knee. 
So here we have this muscle. Make sure that it's it's more in the front than what I've done here. So I'm going to. I think this is called the tensor of the fascia lata. I'm not sure, but I think it's the name from what I recall. Okay. So using the crease brush, I will define it much better. It connects there and breaks approximately there. And then it connects to the tensor, to the fascia lata. It's not a quad, a, a quad, because in the quad you have this muscle that goes underneath. So make sure that this muscle that I'm outlining there goes underneath this muscle. So it doesn't look right here. So I'm going to add some uh, going to add some uh, thickness to this muscle and this one too, and to smooth them out. And then make sure also that this muscle is more uh, important in shape, in size, in weight, in volume. <laughs> make sure that uh, that you have a good placement of the um, great trochanter, which is the the bony protrusion that we have on the side of the leg here. And make sure that again that this wide muscle takes a good amount of place in the model. Okay, now it looks way more defined, so I can add some skin on top of it just to, to blend the muscles together. Maybe I can, using the the crease brush, I can define a bit better the iliac crest there, which helps showing up, showing uh, showing up the volumes. And maybe I can push the the butt a bit more. Yeah, this muscle is quite hard to to sculpt to sculpt why because in the three quarter you you want to see it but you don't want you don't want to you you want to break the silhouette with it but you don't want to over push it so it looks weird <laughs> so yes it's really important to, to define it correctly Okay, so for the back, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the, um, the shapes here a bit, even though it's covering the whole thing, the, the, the latissimus dorsi is, is, is covering the whole thing. I want to split it a bit because I want to add more volume to those muscles that are following the spine vertically. Adding back mass to the some mass to the external oblique, and on top of it, I can insert the some tendons of the of the latissimus dorsi. It's looking, I think, a bit better. And here we have again the butterfly shape that I was talking about for the butt, but also for the um, and also we have the triangle behind the dimples, the two dimples. Okay. So here I'm going to emphasize the infraspinatus. I think it's the, the those are the name. Terrace major, terrace minor, sorry. I'm going to add more volume to them. I 
me re just deactivate my my tool here. This one is much should be much smaller, so I'm going to push it back a bit and add more mass to the top one. Something like this, and remember that on top of it you have the the lattice in the store set. So I can push now using the the crease brush. I can push back those muscles, and I can reemphasize the the shoulder blades. And um, from here, you have. At some point, you have a diamond shape that represents the seventh uh, vertebra, uh, vertebra here. So I'm adding it, and then using the the clay strip, I'm going to incorporate it using the by adding some volumes and like make it more organic, basically, and not robotic, like it was the case. So the trapezius muscles are coming maybe a bit shorter than what I've done here. As you can see here, we don't, we should see from the back the, the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So I, I can dig a bit from that point. I can separate here the cranium from the, from the back. I can smooth everything there. And I can put the, the trape, trapezius muscles a bit I can taper a bit the, the trapezius muscle from from the inside there. And because it's it's a bit uh, compressed there, I can make a bulk shape here um, like this because the muscle are compressed. So the trapezius muscle is going to be a bit uh, more heavy like this. So as I told you, we, we should see a bit of the cyanocleidomastoid muscle that in fact, if I'm not get, uh, if I'm not wrong, let me check on my uh, reference. Yes, it, attach, it attaches way behind the ear, the ear. So starting from there, it's wider on the back like this. And it's, it gets thinner toward the clavicle, but it splits again here. Okay, and it should be more uh, straight. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to to add some tension here. And the more muscular you are, usually the more visible your sternocleidomastery will be. And here you can see that from this view, it's it's not great at all. So I'm going to push it, and I'm going to separate it from the jaw using the, the move brush and I'm going to use my scrape brush to do that to help me defining the, the shape. You can see that it cre creates tiny planes that I don't want so I'm going to smooth those planes and make sure everything works correctly. The jaw is starting to get a bit too prominent I don't want wobbly shapes, or at least I want to avoid them. So as much as possible. So I'm going to try to do that here. And here, uh, using clay strip, I'm going to fill a bit the shapes with skin. And same thing for the neck. The neck is not sure and be too defined here. So I'm going to feel a bit the shapes. You can see that it's, it adds a bit of life to it. Here I can, however, I can dig more where, where the, the clavicle joins. And I can even add some really tensed brush stroke there. 
and smooth everything out. Okay, starts to look a bit better, I think. Okay, so um, let's work on. So maybe the 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 top of the torso is a bit wide. I can try to bring it in, inside a bit and. I see too much of the deltoid from the back view, so I'm going to compensate for that. And I'm going to go back with the, the crease brush. And defining the muscles a bit more. I really like when the muscles are of the back are, are well defined because it creates very, a very a uh, good uh, shape, a very organic shape. It's a it's a nice puzzle, I would say. <laughs> the deltoid should go on top of it, on top of those muscles. So remember to put them on top of them. It's really important that you don't mess mess up with the layering of the muscles. So if it's the case, something will look odd by by default. <laughs> for your viewers. So make sure that you, you can group muscles that are on the same layer. This is something that you, you can do without any hesitation, but you can't group muscles that are, um, that are not on the same uh, layer. Same level, I would say in terms of volume. So for instance here, I cannot, I, I need to push back the, the lats on top of them. Meaning that if I look from the the top, um, I would have to mask this maybe. The lats should go on top of them. Like this. Then I can smooth everything back. And from the top view, the, the, the back is pretty flat from what I can see. So let me add, let me push the muscles a bit more. I really want, from the back, I really want to have what I call the M shape. I want a, a shape that creates a, an M, which it, and this is not the case here. Or it's the case, but you, you can see it's very gentle. So let me let me push the back a bit more. We can do it less because of the the arms, because the arms are uh, pushing back a bit. So everything is going inside from the back standpoint, but anyway, we should still do it. And the, the scapula should be at an angle, at a 45 angle, 45 degree angle. And it should end up here and not here. So I'm going to smooth everything there. I'm going to use clay strip. I'm going to adjust this. So the, the, bi the, bi the delta, it goes there. The trice, the trapezius muscle goes there. On a bit on top of the 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 scapula. but not that much. And the scapula stops underneath the acromion process that I can put back a bit. So push back a bit. So here, here we go. I think it's much logical like this, even though it's too too much defined. So of course I can use now clay strip to feel a bit the parts, to attach back the, the, the deltoid to it and to attach back the pectoral muscle to it. We can smooth everything again. Again, the trapezius muscle from the back attaches to the uh, 
to this section of the of the clavicle. Basically, it wraps, as you can see, it wraps back to the clavicle. And now it's way too much defined. I don't want wobbly shapes here. So let me adjust for the, account for that. Here it's too much defined. Sometimes it's also good to, to take to take a break uh, and see and see it using um, and see your anatomy using lights. So I think at some point once we've finished the pass of, um, of the old body, we are going to to work on the to work on a simple uh, lighting to see what's going wrong and. I think it will help us a lot. So going back to the eyes, I'm going to smooth everything out there. Maybe I can add some volumes to the jaw by gently tapping on top of it, as you can see. Now I can smooth out this. Here we have muscles the masseter muscle that joins your temples to the um, jaw so you can open it and and close it again it's more like this i think if i remember correctly you can bring it back inside a bit Okay, so maybe the pecs are too much defined from this front view. Usually they are maybe higher and I can push them back a bit. Yes, and I can pu push uh, toward the front. I can bring the, cl the clavicle section a bit. It's going to work better, I think. Okay, so what I want to do now is to work on uh, a part that we didn't pay that much attention before, uh, and it's the um, it's the forearm. I think we, we are we are going to work on the forearm now. Says the the guy that is working on the pelvis part. <laughs> Just emphasizing the linguinal belt, I think it's called. Yes. Okay. And uh, blending it with the rest. We're going to work on this part a bit later, but let me for now just adjust what I've done. It was a mistake. Yeah, it was not great. Not a good idea. Anyway, we will have to work on the on, on this part because it has volume. I'm not going to define the section, don't worry, but we have to add some volume a bit. And for the apps we are going to push the the lower ab a bit more. Like this. To add a more life to to our our character even a muscular guy will have some some fat here and there it's not going to completely disappear usually those last group last abdominal section are blended together hence the fact that i'm not defining too hard the, the muscles
Okay, so let's save one time uh, and let's uh, work on, as I told you, let's work on the on the forearm um, a bit more. So we are going to. Hmm. We are going to 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 work on the forearm. So let's go for that. So again, this muscle is probably the most important that attaches from the top. And the bicep, in my case, is too wide in the bottom. So let me just break it a bit like this. And usually the biceps divides here. So I can add with clay strip small muscle here it's it's i think it's a bend just a bend a strap that ends in that direction but it's not that visible so don't worry we're going to add some other muscles so we have one muscle that goes to the inside there that attaches to one of the edge of the one of the con condyle of the of the um, elbow, of the elbow. And that is maybe a bit more here. So I can push back the elbow. So let me go back to this. I'm going to sculpt this muscle sideway. And I will have some muscle here that are lying toward the finger and are that I'm going to group together and those muscle muscles are for the fingers to move so we are going to divide them using the crease brush and think of them as a group and this muscle as I told you so maybe one thing, one easy thing to start with is to divide the, the, the arm in two sections like this. And then you have the, the brachial, brachial radial muscle here. That is a group of muscle where you have one and a second near to it that connects here. And then you have like muscles that are going straight to, to the fingers. And then here, as you can see, you have one muscle that goes inside here. And then you have some muscles that are the if you want, they are the mirror of this one, but they are they are they are there for the fingers in practical terms. OK, so what we want is from the back. We want to, again, I'm looking for references and I really encourage you to do that too. You don't want for this, you don't want to be, uh, to be alone <laughs> and to invent the muscles, even though you can, because everything is logical. But, but I really don't advise you to do that. You always have to, to, to take a look at, uh, good references will do the job for you. Maybe I can lower a bit the apex of this curve and make this one a bit higher. And I will push a bit the volumes of the arm from the top view. And I will make the, the elbow a bit more visible. And what I don't like in my in my uh, sculpt is the fact that the shape is too is not well defined. It's it's too gentle. So I'm going to I'm going to break a bit the the finger the the wrist here. And I'm going to define the 
back of the hand a bit more. So let me just push the wrist a bit back like this and to define the planes of the end from every angle like this. I want here to have a very good separation of the, the end and the arm. Remember that we have a, so I'm going to use clay strip, that we have a, 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 a strap, a b strap, a bend that goes around here that protects the tendons, that makes your finger moves, move, sorry. So I'm going to add that back. And here I can sculpt a bit to shape the back of the end to divide it. Yes, something like this. I think it's going to be fine. Okay. So uh, now that we have worked on the arm a bit more, what we are going to, to do is to to um, uh, to blend a bit more the the arm with the the forearm with the different muscles that we added. So here I want to add more clay. I really it's really important. This angle is really important. So keep that in mind. Uh, I'm going to to emphasize the brachioradial more and also what I want to do and uh, was not and this is not that much the case here I want to take this old part and push it a bit in, into the inside because the the angle of the arm is usually um, has a has a small indentation uh, like this it's more logical even though we can straighten the arm. It's more uh, considered as a relaxed pose to have them have the forearm a bit, a bit uh, angled compared to the to the uh, to the top part of the of the arm. You don't want to have a, a very mechanical uh, mechanical arm. So, okay, here we have the tricep again that I'm going to maybe split a bit sooner. So something like this is, is fine, I think, for me. Um, again, here we have some the brachioradial muscle that is followed by another muscle that just accompanies it. Here again, you can add a straight, a straight curve, a uh, straight curve, a straight uh, um, line, and um, from the back, I've grouped uh, some muscle here, but we also have a small muscle that uh, breaks the silhouette here, so I can add it here. It falls the. It, it, it lies close to the um, it lies it um, rely it, uh, sorry it, uh, it follows the, the, the elbow inside basically um, I don't think I made it with the good size though so I'm going to shorten it and make it closer to the to the elbow. And the rest of those muscles, those big muscles from the top, that that are um, that are lying close to the uh, to the um, bone of the a forearm. I think it's the this one is the ulna. I think yes. They are um, they are just uh, grouped together because at the end. They are there for the tendons of your fingers, so you can add some striation there, but don't make them too too visible because with the, the skin, they will probably be blended. So, on top of that, you can add some skin, 
when I say skin is like literally filling the gaps between the muscles with clay strip like this you can see how organic it looks and it creates mistakes and it creates like exactly what you want like a life lifelike texture you can even use the control key to push back a bit the the, the texture and here you want to You want to make sure that the silhouette of the arm is, great, is, is is looking fine from all the angles and this is the complex task I would say. Here the volume I think is okay of the brachioradial muscle but I don't think that this one is okay from this view so maybe I should push that more inside. And create a nicer S shape with this going to grab the clay strip again putting back the brachialis muscle that should pop out um, here again it's the stake <laughs> so you can add it back a bit but don't over over sculpt it Just we're going to integrate it with the rest, and here on top we are going to add back the volume of the of the flexors. I think there. I think there are the flexors. You have the flexors and the extensors. I don't remember the name of every muscles, but those one I know. So again, we have the um, we have the tricep from the bottom view. We have the triceps, but we have the small muscle. Remember this one, the coricoid process. I think it's called. If I remember correctly, it goes there. And here you have a, another section for the triceps that we talked about previously. It's the third part of the triceps, but usually we see only two. So. You don't have to bother remembering all the smaller bones. Just for this, you just look at references if you want to make something accurate. But otherwise, you just have to remember the, the big forms and it will be fine, I think, in many cases. But here you can see that it creates some, a good effect on this, uh, on this character. Okay. So maybe it's too too exaggerated there. Maybe I can blend it more. Anyway, I think that the the tricep is way more way less defined because of the here because we have the the steak <laughs> the brachial muscle and let me add back the biceps on top of everything If you're confused, confused, just take a reference and follow along with me. And just if you don't have uh, references, anatomical ref references, you will be lost for sure. Again, what I said is that with the time um, and with many exercises, you will have the luxury of not taking that much references. But if you want the names and if you want to be very precise, and of course you will benefit from references a lot okay so I think that 
for the forearm and the arm in general we can stop there we didn't touch that much the leg uh, but I think that the legs were pretty okay um, Yes, maybe the only thing is the back view of the leg, so let me grab a reference again for that. A, go a good reference, a good site for getting anatomical reference is also Sketchfab. You can search for um, a 3D maquette and you go there and you have some pretty good ones. So I really encourage you to, to take a look at 3D models too. You can even buy some if you want to have a a more detailed study. So here I will speed a bit the gastrocnemius muscle and blend them back. You can see that it creates a shape like this. So again, this is the hamstrings. Maybe we can bring with the gravity a bit the, the butt muscle here and uh, adding uh, some clay there. It's important to remember that gravity is taking a big part in the way the muscles are shaped. And always remember to to take a look at every angle of your model. The, the, the biggest mistake I, I see uh, with beginner sculpt is that it looks great in one angle, but as soon as you turn the mesh around, things are start starts to look to, to looks to look weird. And that's the last thing that you want. Again, remember the dimple there. So, now I'm going to try one thing with my uh, sculpt. I'm going to try to rig the legs, to rig it basically, in a very, how can I say, in a very quick, very quick way. And uh, this will Help me sculpt the leg inside. Just defining a bit the knee near the tibia. And um, also so the, gastro the gastrocnemius muscles here, again, they're coming from there and then up here, they're uh, separating like this and you have a, a big muscle that flows here. Following the tibia, but we can blend everything together. And here I would like to emphasize the crease and then using clay strip I, I, I will add um, perpendicular striation like this because remember that this, this, this fold of the skins will go perpendicular to where the muscle is bending the things and because it's a uh, hole and that you have skin the skin is going to to push a bit outward and then you are going to have like a, a, a like a small uh, bulk of, of skin that will push outward and then uh, I will add more 
volume to the gastronomus. I think that I've ruined, ruined everything there, so let me <laughs> let me do that again. I'm going to use the crease brush to crease everything from there. We'll try to smooth everything a bit more, and then from the side, I'm going to add back the volume of the hamstring, the hamstrings like this. It's pretty straight, in fact. And slightly um, out jowed. I think it's the term in English, I don't remember. It. Slightly tilted toward the inside. Okay, so let's dive now into the, what I told you before, the rigging aspect, but before I, we are going to do a quick light test. Um, that's pretty easy to do in Blender. Um, if you're using ZBrush, you can also do the same thing uh, that I'm going to show you. Uh, you just have to you just have to to use the light uh, the light panel uh, just let, let me just here tweak a bit the shape of the of the butt from a three quarter point of view. I want to add more mass. Something like that is much better for me. And from the bottom view, I can push it even more. Yes. Okay. So, just save before. <laughs> and uh, you can uh, add a light, and we are going to add an area light, and I'm going to go in the layout uh, view. And I'm going to use EV for that. So here I'm going into the EV mode. I'm going to scale my light and here I'm going to put 10,000 watts and I'm going to enter in render mode. Okay. Oh, by the way, I've added the transparent background. You can go that in the, uh, in the film section. It's here can remove the transparent section. And what you can do too is to add ambient occlusion. And um, you can also uh, increase the render, the viewport quality here to let's say 32. And you can go in the light section. Mm, where is it? Shadow section, sorry. Uh, click the height, bit depth, and the soft shadows. Increase the cube size and the cascade size if you want to. And let's add high quality normals too. It's going to be slower. Everything that I'm checking is to make EV slower basically. And um, also, just remove the, the, the transparent. And on the on the light, you can also check the shadows. But contact shadows also helps defining the the contact points. So here you can see that increasing the distance here adds a shadow, a close shadow and this is quite helpful. And you will tell me that how did I get this material looking? I was making some tests in, in, uh, in between the two tutorials. Don't worry, I, I didn't sculpt anything. I just, I just make, made some tests. But what you can do is to, you can go in the shading part here. Um, and I've just added a simple principle BSDF to this material. So you select it here, material file, let's call it, let's call it clay. And you can change the base color. I've added a bit of subsurface scattering that is blue. I've uh, removed, uh, I've, I've increased a bit the roughness. And that's it basically, That's that's not, I didn't do much more. And the cool thing is that now you can watch your model from every side. But the issue with that is that 
the, um, the eyes are not going to follow. So in order to make the eye follow, what you can do is you can add an empty by pressing Alt A, you can add a plane axis, and you can select both of your things and you can parent them by pressing Ctrl P, keep transform. And now if you're rotating the empty, you will be able to watch your model. Uh, if you rotate the empty on the Z axis, you will be able to watch your model from every point of view. So yes, um, that's the test for looking at your volumes. Um, if you want to make a more um, dramatic lighting, of course, you can add a rim light. So in order to add a rim light, you place your cursor where you want. So let's say here, you just have to press shift and right click. And then you can go to light and let's add a sunlight. Uh, it doesn't matter where you place your, your light because it's a directional light. It's very far away. And uh, what I'd like to do for the rim light is to put it uh, red so I can see it and then change the color back. So here you can say something like this. You can play a bit with the angle. The lower angle you have, the more sharp it should be. You can remove the specular. Usually for the rim light, I don't uh, add shadows. And um, yes, you can play with the angle by pressing R twice. You will be able to to rotate it the way you, you want. And now you can push it toward the color that you like. Let's say light blue like this. And now when you're um, rotating your model, you will have a rim light everywhere. Okay. Alt R, you will undo your 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 rotation. So I'm pretty happy with the the way the the, the, the eyes turned out. Um, I'm not that happy with the crouch section. Of course, we'll have to work a bit more on this section. Uh, usually this is a, a a part that you don't uh, see that much because you have cloth on top of them. Uh, but it's important to have the volumes, uh, I think, uh, because uh, yes, it's just there. Um, we are going to to work on the leg a bit more. And, um, I probably will add more mass here. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the way the back turned out. Even though it's a bit flat, it's flat because I'm turning around. And basically, if I'm turning my geometry, it's better. As you will see, you will have more information. You can also, of course, you can also change the way the shader work to have more specular. So let's say that I'm uh, making it blue like this, you can see that it shines more and gives you more information about your angles, about your volume, sorry. And uh, also remember that uh, subsurface scattering is blending a lot of things. So here, I don't have any subsurface scattering, but as soon, uh, and also the roughness plays uh, an important role. Like you, 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 you see that if I'm lowering a bit the roughness, you see immediately the way the 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 shader works and replicates and, and pushes the volumes but the the, the side uh, effect is that it's um, is that it's more uh, shiny of course so i want the roughness that is a bit higher oh and by the way i didn't show you that in the shading um, part i've added in the wall section i've created this small node node pass to i've imported the free uh, HDR. I'm putting it in a, in a background shader that I will mix with another shade, uh, background shader. Simple. Uh, why? Because I don't. I don't want the the back the. Um, I don't want the um, HDR to see. So by default, if you just plug an HDR like this, you will see that the HDR is placed all around the, your model and in, in the background. But if you go in the shading part, and you mix your um, HDR with uh, another background and you plug the surface in the world and you filter the camera ray as the factor it will 
for the background it will take this color hence the fact that in here we have an HDR plus we have um, plus we have um, uh, um, a gray background sorry uh, so yes okay so now I'm going to try and again it's just a try I'm going to try to to rig my character quickly so I'm going in back into the sculpt mode in sculpt mode you you're using a matte cap here so you can also look at different matte caps I was using this one I think for the for the modeling of the base mesh but you can look at other other color if you if you'd like to I really like the first one because it shows the shapes pretty well I think and I'm going to yes as I told you I'm going to add the volume of the crouch a bit, a bit more and I'm going to crease with a larger crease brush it helps me pushing more more mass okay so I'm pushing pushing the volumes like this and I'm going to, with uh, the clay strip brush I'm going to add back the tensor of the fascia letter here uh, a bit more I don't want the I don't want this muscle to puck that much to to pop that much in the front view so I'm going to blend it and just like this as you can see I think it works better and um, here we are missing something I think uh, I'm going to shape the oblique a bit like a uh, a nest shape from the front, like like if it's joining the 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 front passing by the iliac crest, which is the case. In fact, I'm not saving it. So something like this is is much better. And I'm going to use the 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 crease brush to maybe define a bit the linguinal um, ligament. I think it's called like that and I'm going to with a large crease brush I'm going to to dig there and from the side view I'm going to put the crotch a bit in front and I'm going to smooth everything out a bit back a bit sorry Something like this, I think, is okay. But now here, what I don't like with the external oblique is that they're not um, being pushed too much by the gravity. So I'm going to to emphasize the the volume there, and I'm going to work on the silhouette from the front view. But remember that this is pulled by the gravity uh, here. The mass is pulled by the gravity down so it's really important to to notice that okay again you don't want to over emphasize a muscle uh, compared to another it's, re it's really important to 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 think that your mesh is a is a whole is a whole thing <laughs> sorry it's not a whole like uh, Sorry for my English. I think you you understood what I said. So I'm going to to press Alt B to see only my torso. And uh, oh, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out from this view. Maybe I can just here tweak a bit this part so it so it follows a bit better the the arc the arch of the pelvis but overall I'm pretty happy oh yes here I've messed everything because I was in a slice mode in a slice view so let me add back that that volume okay so now what we can do again is this uh, small test of rigging the, the the character 
I don't promise you anything pretty magical, but we are going to try that. I'm just adding a bit more mass before that to the pecs. Uh, again, same reason than the, the external oblique. It's it's been pulled by down by the gravity. So here you can do that too. And uh, I've just cut the tutorial just to to tell you that I'm not going to read the character right now because uh, I don't want to walk you through the the complex process of uh, rigging, rigging it correctly, etc. And I don't want to mess up with the with the sculpt. So what we are doing, what we are going to do, uh, in fact, is just uh, I hope I think that we're going to try. But I think that if we isolate one part and we sculpt it like let, let me for instance sculpt uh, let me sculpt a, a big part there so with door shark i'm gonna sculpt the ness i think that it matches the other one so you can see we can now by pressing alt b we can do that and now we are going to sculpt the uh, inner part of the leg that is really important and it's the um, what I want to sculpt is the adductor and I want to push back the satyrus muscle. So the satyrus is the long S shape that follows the quads and that join um, that goes back to the underneath the, the knee like this. It attaches uh, to the tibia underneath we won't see it but trust me it's there and it's too much defined too large so i'm going to cut a bit here yes much better and then i'm going to define the um, the the different muscles uh, that are the ab uh, adductors adductor muscles so they are going there we have three of them one inside there two and three we won't see it but trust me it's there <laughs> and we will group them together Okay, but if you just have a small indication of this one, usually it's a good idea. I'm going to make it more visible, like this. And um, I'm going to use the, the crease brush to, to define a bit more this section. So again, here I'm cutting the satyrus muscle. The adductors are there. Cutting more there. The adductors are there. I can cut them a bit here. One, two, three. Here we have a lot of things that I, I don't want to <laughs> bother explaining you because first I don't know them by heart. And I, I've, I went through one time the underneath of the anatomy and was too too much for what I need to do as an artist. What I need to understand as an artist. But anyway, if you are being, if you are doing, if you are a doctor, probably will have to learn that. But if you are not, don't bother <laughs> learning that. Okay. So here the ad adductors are maybe very strong compared to what they should be. But anyway, we have one that is attached to the very front part of the of the, the pelvis. So here, and that goes underneath the satyrus muscle. So I can bring that on top and just indicate it as a straight muscle like this. And using the crease brush, I will separate it 
and integrate it better. So you can see it goes from the front of the pelvis, even it should even go, uh, it should be even more toward the front. So this whole part I can push forward. And now I can blur a bit the things. And using the crease brush, I can integrate that back better. It's really important to at least have this shape, this uh, cutting shape from the side and to have those muscle at least as a big mass, even though they are not separated very precisely, you should at least have some indication of them. And from the back view, we have um, the um, hamstrings that are cutting The, the leg like this and they are cutting here down and here we see two other muscles one there that connects underneath the hamstrings and you have um, some mass here that can be filled with other muscles that usually you won't see okay unless the character is doing a uh, is spreading the legs so i'm going to add some clay strip work here i'm going to feel the muscle like that and also i'm going to straighten a bit this part and and try to push the muscles inside, more inside here and remove the wobbly effect that I don't like. So the crease of the of the butt, you can make it more pinched if you want to. Because you will have some skin folds there. And let's look at uh, look at everything from the front. You should be able to uh, you shouldn't be able to see the back muscles from the front. So probably I will push the, the front back the back uh, the I will push the back sorry muscles more inside. And here I will push the front a bit more toward the inside. Yes, and I will again remove every wobbly part that, I, that I'm seeing. So here it's a very wobbly part. I'm not very happy with the way the, the adductor is turned out, but I think that the underlying geometry is not perfect for this. So let me try to add some crease here to make it a bit uh, a bit nicer and here for sure I will have here you have a lot of tendons you have a big uh, a big um, it's like a big sheet of tendon if you want okay so if we look at the leg this part should be more emphasized and this again, this, you know what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the mask. I want to, to mask out the satyrus muscle. And I'm going to push the inside more inside, the addu adductor muscles more inside. Still thinking about the shape they should have in terms yes, of geometry. And then I'm trying to remove again the, the wobbly shape here. And pressing Alt B, I should have everything solved from the other side. And here, because I've been moving 
my brush around the center probably I will have to correct some stuff but anyway one thing that will uh, I will do is uh, I will work a bit on the feet but I will also um, I will also add some mass uh, in the pubic area uh, I think it's important to uh, I, I won't sculpt the, the this part in detail but I think it's important to have the mass that it takes the volume that it takes at least so when you are going to sculpt for instance uh, uh, clothes on top you are you should be aware of that of course this is something that is more more important on the male model so be sure that the volume is there okay I'm not very happy with the way the inner leg turned out, turned out, but we'll have to work. I'll, I will have to do with it, to deal with it. Sorry. And here, that's too. I think it's too pinched. I'm not happy with the fact that it's pinched. So again, here we'll have some, uh, some um, tenderness, some tendon, tendon work and things like this. Uh, this is uh, not very important for what I think we are doing. So again, this area is not perfectly sculpted so I'm going to work on it so here remember that we have the um, a big muscle big big tendon called the fascia lata that will take a small volume that like this and on top of that we have again the tensor of the fascia lata we have a different muscle that connects to it like this that we can then blend together a bit more From the top view, I can maybe push a bit the quads. Here, they are losing some volume. Yeah, I think it's much better like this. And I'm going to look at the reference for the knee, I think, because my knee is not uh, is far for is far from uh, from perfect, and uh, I think I could could help to have a small reference so basically it's just adding some here it's a tendon that connects to the knee and we have the quads that f that are following like this but again I want to emphasize the gravity force pushing the muscles down down this is really important and this plays a big a huge role in the sh in the shape of the knee and same thing here uh, where you have the um, the satyrus coming there you want to emphasize the gravity here i'm going to start to add some skin folds on the top of the knee i think it's going to be fine like this okay Maybe the um, can maybe work a bit more on the gastrocnemius, but you know what? I'm going to work on the on the feet right now, and I think I'm going to after that I'm going to call it done for this tutorial. I don't want to spend hours and hours and hours even though it's what you should do if you want to do something perfect but here it's just an exercise and I think 
it's going to be okay. So one thing that you could remember from last video is um, the different masses of the of the foot. So we have one mass here. Here are two for the big toe. I like to call them the pads of the of the foot. Here we have one, two. Here we have a, a huge pad, huge uh, pad. Then here we have a connection. Here we have a, a crease. And finally, for the for the um, I don't I don't know the the name. I don't remember, I don't recall the name of the of this part. Sorry. But you, you get me, you have one, two here. And because they are flat on the ground, they are being pushed a bit. So they are not that round. And you will, you will have to also work on the Achilles tendon here. Making it more visible. You can use crease for doing that, like this. With a large crease brush, you can quickly emphasize uh, this shape, as you can see. And here, you can work like that. I think I think I think it's 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 starting to to look good enough for this exercise. Of course, I will really encourage you to to pursue the the study that we started together with this sculpt. Uh, I've done really thousands of them uh, working on only some parts for instance like doing only a study of the of the of the arm only doing a study of the of the leg um, it's really important to do that because it will uh, first make you comfortable with the tools that you're using it be ZBrush or Blender or whatever software that you like to use and it makes you um, comfortable with the, the shapes that you are dealing with and trust me knowing the human body is a, a lifetime um, exercise and lifetime learning and you should be very humble in the way you 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 f with you humble with you with the the amount of knowledge that uh, you know and that you it's not because you've sculpted once uh, a body that looks great that you of course know everything you can always learn a small muscle that will make the difference and and it's a again it's a lifetime adventure so if you like this uh, trust me, it's very passionating. It's very interesting, but it takes time, and it takes uh, you, you need to invest time a lot, and you also need to to relax and put the effort into sculpting, into drawing, into into making stuff happening, basically. Because a lot of people think they are they are bad at doing some stuff. A lot of beginners, and they, they it, it's uh, something that they will never be able to do. But honestly, it's just that you have to put the time um, in it. And for for instance, for me, I have tons of tons of things to learn and to perfect. Uh, to tweak in my knowledge of anatomy and in my way of working and I'm constantly learning and this is what I think is the most um, important thing in order to progress in that field and in I would say any field um, for instance uh, it's the same for me in program when programming I'm getting better and better over the years be the years because it's been a long time that I've started to learn how to program, but 
but I can always learn something and learn from somebody else and and be amazed by things that that are sometimes simple that I n didn't read about or never saw in my in my developer career. So yes. I hope you enjoyed this um, this tutorial. I, I oh, sorry. I told you that I need to. I, I needed to work on on this part because I'm, I'm looking at the silhouette. It's not good enough for me. So I'm going to cut it a bit more. But trust me, it's, we are near the end now. Got the advantage to look at the time code on YouTube, and you know before me when the end will be. <laughs> and this is something that I'm doing a lot in my tutorials. It's I'm saying like it's the end, and in fact, not it's not the end because I'm always willing to push the things more. Here I can cut also the quads. You can see it will show a bit more the um, the fasciolata, which is this sort of Y shape that we have here. And it will be, uh, I think it's the, the time to at least define a bit this section. I'm sorry, forgot about it. You can see that here it goes down and here it's a bit chaotic, but basically it cuts there. And it blends with the knee and you want it to be defined. <laughs> So let's define it like this. And from the side view, uh, usually the quad muscle, like this giant muscle that I've been working on here is should be pushed inside and this side it's sideways. So I'm going to push it and make the Y shape here going on top of it. But I'm going to, as you can see, I'm going to push it back and we see it go through there a bit. Now it starts to make sense, no? Okay. But of course, once you've added something, you should integrate it with the rest. So let me spend some time here filling the gaps. I will say that it's very difficult as uh, when when you sculpt to to keep the, the volume thin thinner. So here for instance the tensor of the fasciolata is very thin. It's a very it's like a it's like a small paper paper sheet on top of it. And the real and the real muscle is there that creates the silhouette of this shape. So I'm going to push it. From the three quarter view, I'm going to make it more like a droplet. And using C, I'm going to, uh, Shift C, sorry, I'm going to cut again the different parts here. I don't like that part because it starts to wobbly, <laughs> to wobble. Yes, and this is this will be probably where you have to to put the time and like once you have laid down the whole anatomy, you will have to to spend some time polishing your your surface with. You can use the the scraped brush to remove some of the pain of smoothing. instance for the tensor fasciolata is easier to, to use this technique. You can see it creates 
more paper-like uh, surface. Here, I can clearly cut the quads and make this one a bit rounder. Remember the shape of this one. Pressing my shortcut for clay strip, I can add back to this and I can blend them a bit in the middle. It's not that much defined usually. So remember that you are still dealing with a, an organic shape. I'm sorry, I think I, I still need to work. <laughs> so the, the rules stand. <laughs> the rule stands by by itself. <laughs> I never say it's finished when it's finished. At least well, I, I, I always say at least one time it's finished and no, it's not finished. You see, you s and and you see the effort it takes to to have something plausible. I've a bit destroyed. I've destroyed a bit my 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 shape. Uh, I would like to to add more volume to the side, like this. I think it's more elegant like this. And also looking at the reference again because. This is always what I'm doing now at the end. I think I can bring back the this part this part down a bit because the, the pelvis is tilted forward and it was not that much tilted so I can bring it down a bit. So I think it's better like this. And again I can try to to make that S shape there with the the, ob the external oblique and maybe bring this part inside a bit more But I, I think that overall I'm starting to get pretty satisfied with the for the time that we spent on this with the the placement of the muscles. Just this one is still right to get right from every angle. This is also always for me a nightmare finding the right angles of the butt from every angle. The right shape, sorry, from every angle. But I think I will have to stop anyway at some point. Plus, it depends on the on the type of people that you are making. So, this is something really um, subject to to change. I think here I can make this part a bit higher and maybe I can round the, ra add a round nest there a bit and you know what I'm going to blend a bit the back here and feel a bit this, this section that starts to get too much uh, cut at this point you would have to do a, a, a great amount of work, a great deal of work to, 
to make it more um, realistic in terms of skin. So for instance here, let me save the save a new version of this so you can see what I'm meaning. At this point, you will have to, for instance, go over everything like this, like basically scri scribble around your mesh. So, but with very tiny stroke and smooth. And you can see it starts to look more realistic. I didn't want to do that before because it takes some time. I think I won't have the the time to do that f sin uh, everywhere, but you can see the the quality of um, of detail it adds and the life the lifeness it adds. You can also emphasize some parts, make mistakes here and there. It creates a more plausible character. It removes a bit the readability, the readability of the of some muscles. But if you are doing that with care, you can see how realistic your your character can quickly go. And of course, this is the first layer. After you have to add, uh, you have to spend some time doing uh, smaller detail for the scheme remember to to smooth a lot but this is this section this part is harder to 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 do since the beginning because you don't want to especially in a tutorial where the idea is to learn the human anatomy you don't want to mess the placement of the different muscles. So I will highly encourage you placing the muscle right and then after spending the time to feel, to homogenize, to, to blend your shapes like I'm doing. I'm doing it fast, really fast, to, just to show you, but usually this process will take me an hour or two at least the first pass. And you can see that I'm not very precise and you should be precise when doing this. It's just blending, mixing the, the things together and removing the, the industrial design aspect of the, of the cut of the crease brush. can see how better it looks like this. We didn't work on the on the hand in this video, but I think you can work on it by yourself. You understood the, the major ideas in the previous uh, in the previous tutorial, I think, I hope. So you see how it adds a nice quality, a nice textural quality to the to the mesh. Just rounder, rounding a bit more the the satyrus, the serratus muscles. You can add a bit more of them if you want. Depends on what your on what you are doing, but it, you you see now now it's, I would say it's your time to. To put the time, <laughs> on on, on this. So some tips for adding some 
uh, life to your character like that are really quick to do and that and that could uh, help you as also to add some veins and so let me just finish with the deltoid and then I'm going to add some veins on on the arm you can see how I'm blending the shapes so they are not uh, cut out like uh, like Lego bricks I want that here so now at this point you can also leave the symmetry so I'm leaving the symmetry and I'm going to separate a bit the muscles from the back for instance you can see how it adds a bit more life to to the mesh you have to be very careful about the changes that you are doing if you want some time someday to to bring back to bring symmetry back but one thing that you can do too is to um, avoid having similar packs and uh, usually they are they are not uh, the same um, they, they some are larger some are skewed a bit same thing for the 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 serratus muscles so here you can cut striation make the fiber go out here I'm going to go that go through that quickly same thing for the clavicle here you can you will see you can add some, some some skin on top of that basically make some imperfection to your your sculpt is the, the key to, to realism. And here, for instance, you can really separate the, the pegs. But doing it asymmetrically will add, will add some, some life to, to your mesh. Let's add some play strip to bring the muscle to to feel the muscle a bit more. You can add more mass to this side because this side usually is pulled down by the gravity much more. But now because it's a, it's it's a bit tensed because of the pose, so the anatomical pose, so let's, let's push that back up. Here you can clearly see a cut because one part is going on top of it. So let's do it like this. So let's add some um, some imperfection to the back. Some default to the back. Some skin work basically. Play strip is really good for that, I think, because it feels the form. And um, let's 
now add some veins. So here I, I can use the draw brush. And veins usually are placed randomly. But you see them a lot on the biceps. You can see how tiny details add to your, to your sculpt. Something like this, for instance. And you can branch them, make them branch. You can do the same on the on the neck, some of them, especially on the following there, the, the this part of the neck. Some uh, some on the some of some of them on, uh, near the tibia there. Can be a bit wobbly with the with this. Uh, not too much. And basically, you can also like just with your brush like move some parts a bit more asymmetrical, or let's let's make the mouth a bit higher there. Let's change the way this eye look. Let's remove the the sad expression of, of this guy and let's with clay strip let's break the break the, the the arcade part there. Usually it's not symmetrical there. So you will have to let me grab a good reference. Yes, you will have to to break it one way or, not, or another, we'll break it there. So I didn't add the skin work there. I can add some of them. It's important to smooth, especially with clay strip, to smooth the start and the end of the brushwork. You don't want this instance, of course. So here I'm going to flatten a bit to to remove a bit the flatness of the top of the nose. And, uh, I'm going to feel a bit some part here and there, basically adding more life. It. I can cut here, adding skin folds there, and smoothing, smoothing them. You can see how small things help to sell the the model better. Here you can increase some fold. Be careful not to make them too 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 important. I will add with the um, draw. I will add a bit of thickness to the bottom there and I, will, I can do the same for the top of the mouth it sometimes helps to sell the, the shape of the mouth a bit better and here we'll cut a bit more the the filtrum it's called the filtrum making sure everything is smooth as it should maybe the nostrils are a bit I didn't make the best job as possible for the for the chick that done better.
Yeah, still ton of work on this on this model. <laughs> Trying to avoid the schematic view of the of the, the, the shape here. Adding back some skin work. Again, it's the first. The idea is that it's the first uh, phase. And then after you should work on textural information a bit more. So using scrape is a good way to here to add more sharpness to this part from the top view and from the side view. Yes, that I think that's it for for what we are going to do for this tutorial. I'm just going to show you the result in E. Bringing back the, um, the light and the empty and the area light. And yes, that, that's it for the, I would say the additive brush work that you can do. Um, let me just show you f the, um, where we started. We started from there. So I'm going to copy. I'm going to copy it and put it in that back. Sorry, here. So that's the difference. Um, from uh, what I uh, f f that that's the difference that we we've made uh, between this one and the other one so the light is closer to to the to the other one so it's easy to <laughs> to make better contrast as you can see but anyway i think you get my point uh this is much more realistic in terms of uh, skin work but if you want to of course um go back more to a schematic view like this or make a, like a superhero for instance it's um it's okay to 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 go with it to go with this one, but um, let me just lower the, the light here and we can work. The, the cool thing is that with EV we can get much more nicer result. For instance, here the area light, I'm gonna change it to a disc, a disc shape. And I'm going to lower down the, the strength. I'm going to enter uh, into the camera view that I can move back. Oh, sorry, yeah. this was for the close shot. I already set up that set up that before, but I can go to this view for seeing the, the big result. The eyes, I've added some, uh, some materials, but I'm pretty sure you've seen that. Um, for making it more realistic but also I can make them a bit grayer and I can remove the sharpness so it's the smoothness value that you want that you will want to tweak and um, when rendering this by pressing F12, it looks like this, if I can bring it to you. So yes, you can see uh, the, the way it looks, but the best thing for this kind of stuff is to use, of course, cycles, which is the, um, the, um, the ray tracer. And uh, you can see how much more details you will have uh, with this kind of um, with this kind of um, render engine and the cool thing is that you can uh, enable for the render the open image noise here 
and you will have e an, an even more uh, quality render I, I can say and um, if you want to have a more dramatic lighting you can uh, lower down the um, the HDR so I'm going back there and you can play a, a lot with the um, so here for instance the sun I don't want to cast shadows but this one I want uh, but you can lower down for instance the max bounce the light will do so in this case I'm going to do 2 for the sun and maybe 10 for the 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 area light and you can see the closer you get the the more bright the, the light will be with an area light and also the size will make the the the, um, the shadow more uh, harsh you can see that here I have more uh, hard shadows and here the larger it gets the larger the photons from the light are um, emit are emitting uh, the, the are are spreading over a larger uh, over the areas it uh, collides with hence the fact that the shadows are going to be uh, a bit uh, smooth smoother and um, yes what you can do on top of that is maybe add like a small let's say a red light there with let's add a point light for instance so let's add 2000 watts Make it, making it there putting it there it adds a bit of uh, variety to the lighting and uh, rendering this is in fact as you will see pretty fast with the open intel denoiser it's loading the loading the HDR but the rest is pretty fast as you can see I'm rendering on the, my GPU and then as you can see it's the the denoiser is going through and removing the noise as it says it's AI based and it works pretty well and I think I can do a better job with the the material so let me check get the material and let me remove a bit uh, the roughness of it and I can also angle this light a bit more toward the side to make the sh to reveal the shape a bit better Lighting take, takes time for sure. <laughs> so, try with a lower intensity and maybe a more front front light. Something like this, maybe 4000. Pressing F12 for making the render. This is no, <laughs> this is not a, an anatomy tutorial anymore, and a way. Uh, I, I'm getting way over what I wanted to show you so just consider that as a bonus section so yes I'm pretty sure you you remember all the muscles that we've uh, went through but just in case I'm going to draw them from this view again so we have here the pecs with one part that connects to the clavicle one big part that connects to the arm and one part that connects to to the coastal section we have the abs there, the satoris muscles that we don't see that much here. The ribcage will be around there, I think. Uh, 
on top of that we have the external blicks the clavicle will be here with the sternocleidomastoid muscles trapezius shape will connect from the back to the clavicle there here we have the acromion process the deltoid is here we have the bicep muscle here the brachioradial muscle that that connects in fact more like this that joins there here we have um, the flexors that joins there here we have the a bit of the brachial radial or the brachial muscle that we see poking through here here's the tricep for the hand we have one part here one part here one part here and small pads for the, the knuckles for the base of the fingers here the tensor of the fascia lata here another muscle that i don't remember but the, it's connected to uh, to the it's the great trochanter but it's co it connects to the facial facial letter here we have the satorius muscle that we can better we can see better here here the quad the vastus medial uh, the vastus medialis i think uh, two and three the knee of course the tibia that goes inside you can see better here the knee here here muscle that goes in between the gastrocnemius behind there here the tensor the fascial attack connects there um, yeah that's pretty much the whole anatomy I know by heart the in linguinal inguinal uh, ligament here, the iliac crest that goes behind there. Um, you will have probably the nipples there. So the the abdominal section is divided into many groups, eight parts, with one that is below the 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 pecs and if you draw them they are more like this here on the we remember this part that we started with here it's more base shape a base shape we have here uh, a, uh, a section that goes underneath the mouth one section two three four five for the mouth remember the jaw here it's not a muscle but it's a it's a really important part it's called the zygomatic remember that we have the helix for the here for the ear sorry the y shape is here The temple are there. Here we have a masseter muscle that connects and makes it connects your jaw and makes your 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 jaw work basically. Here remember that the nasal goes inside like this. Remember the Adam apple like that. Sternocleidomastoid muscles. That branches there. The foot, you have to remember this section. The toes are there, so this section. Here you have an arch that is really important. Remember that here in the inside you have um, the tibia creating a um, protrusion there that is higher from the front than the other one so yeah basically that's it 
I've covered everything that I know by heart uh, from the front view, from this view at least. And there are tons of other, of other bones on the back view that, uh, that I also know some of them. <laughs> but as you can see, we've created um, a study, an anatomy study from scratch, uh, from a scratch, from a base mesh. Um, and uh, you can see here it's go it goes higher, but this one is lower. And this is a higher and this is higher. So yes, I hope you liked it. Um, don't hesitate to put comments in the comment section. Don't hesitate to show your work on my Discord. And um, thank you for watching it till the end. I know it has been a long process. Um, don't hesitate to continue, of course, this study. It's not perfect. There are a lot of stuff to do um, uh, to make it more realistic, but I think it's enough for a tutorial. So see you soon. Thank you again and take care of yourself.